Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the house of the Lord. Another day right now to lift him up with thanksgiving and praise right now. To glorify his name, to magnify his name, to shout at his holy name. Because he deserves all the thanks right now. He deserves all the praise right now. And he deserves all the glory. God is good all the time and all the time. God is so good. Every day is a day to walk in his house with thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. Because he is so good. God is so good. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you are facing right now. God is still good. I know, I know some of y'all are going through a difficult time right now. I know some of y'all are dealing with some hardships right now. I know y'all, some of y'all are probably thinking, God, where you at when you're going to show up? But he's still good. See, don't wait till the trouble comes to start giving Jesus thanks and praise and glory. But if you start praising him and start glorifying him when the trouble do come, it will just slide right off you because your praise is going to get you through it. My brothers and sisters, that's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, glory and hallelujah, he is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. As long as I have breath and I have my energy, I'm going to thank him and praise him, even if I got to do it by myself. God is so good. And he is so faithful to the point that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never do you wrong. But most of all, he'll never give up on you and he'll never fail you. That's how good he is. And if you have not given Jesus the thanks right now today, the praise right now today, or the glory right now today, open up your heart and praise his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today, peaceful and humbly, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We thank you, Father God, for this day. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this chance of a lifetime. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message right now. That's going to keep us full right now. going to keep us satisfied right now. There's no place I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus. But right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, this thanking you and praising you and glorify you and magnify your name right now today, Jesus. Oh, Father God, you have your way right now today, Father God, in your house, Father God. Allow your presence to move in this place. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship right now. Move through us right now. Touch us right now. Heal us in every area where we are hurting and suffering right now today, Father God. Oh, God, we magnify your name. We exalt your holy name, Father God. Oh, Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Oh, Father God, allow your presence to move to this place. I know our head right now. Fill our cups up right now so it can overflow right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today to fill us up. The whole, more of the Holy Spirit right now. Father God, we want more of you and less of ourselves right now today. Father God, let your words go out and it should not return back void right now today. Oh God, we thank you. We glorify your name right now today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father God, our Father, you are welcome right now to enter to your home right now, your sanctuary right now, your YouTube channel right now, your platform right now. My brother's homes, my brother's life, my sister's homes, and my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in this sanctuary right now, on this YouTube channel, on this platform right now. Even in my sister's homes right now, and my sister's life. My brother's homes, my brother's life. 
Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now on our behalf. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to touch my brother and sister right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to allow us to hold it those fire right now. Holy Spirit, we ask you for help. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind, control our anxieties, control our fears right now so we can hear whatever it is that we need to hear. So we can see whatever it is that we need to see. Father God, you are in control and you are in charge of the situation of this matter. No matter what we're going through, we know that you are in control, Jesus. Even though it looks bad right now, but you're still in control. You're still in charge. You're running this whole show. And God, you don't need nobody help. Father God, we want to let you know how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am, Father God, to pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my brothers and sisters today, Father God, in your house. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're available for praise. We're available for service. We're available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, we are available for you. Father God, we just want to say thank you. As we lift your name over thanksgiving and praise. Father God, please forgive us for our sins, known and unknown right now. Wash us as white as snow right now. Purify through your blood right now today, Jesus. Father God, before I get started. It's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that's always in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and on the fruit of my lips about you, Jesus. Now it's got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more of you and less of myself because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now. Let him know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. Amen? Amen. Everybody is not a God as they prefer, as they say they are. Everybody's not a God because you see them in a church praising, worshiping, and falling down. Everybody's not a God even though they post stuff on their social media. And I can tell you, God knows who belongs to Him. God knows who is praising and worshiping for real. Some people put on a real, real show pretending that's who they are. But God, hallelujah, he knows the heart. He knows the heart. That's one thing that God, he tests every single day is their heart. There's a lot of people out here right now today pretending to be something that they really not. And God is about to expose them right in front of your face, my sisters. God is about to expose them right now today in front of your face, my brother. Because he's saying, everybody's not of me. Some people out here is to use you and take advantage of you. You can't be a God if your heart is not right. Mm, 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 mm. You cannot be a God if your heart is not right. See, the flesh, it look good. But God said, I know they hard. The person that you with, they ain't right for you. The person that you in love with, they ain't right for you. Their so-called friend, they ain't right for you. And the reason why God is saying they ain't right for you is because God said they heart ain't right. God knows whose heart is pure. He knows that. He knows that without a doubt. But it's a lot of people. It's bamboozling you right now today. But 
you ain't got to worry about sisters. You ain't got to worry about brothers. Once God exposes who they are, you're going to know who the one's been using you the whole time. But at the end of the day, they got to pay for what they're doing to you. They don't realize that. It come consequences behind that. Because God is not going to allow somebody continue to use and manipulate his children. He's not going to do it. He's putting a stop to it today, and he's about to put a stop to it now. He said he told y'all a long time ago, let his people go. If you're not going to be right about my son and daughter, let them go. If you're not going to love them unconditionally right now, let them know. If you want to keep it real, if you're not going to be solid towards my son and my daughter, let them go. But nah, some of y'all want to play really bad, but God says it one time, let them go. And he means what he says. You can sit there and play, acting like God is a drug if you want to. Right now, the test is about to happen. And God is going to show you who is God. God has had enough of y'all using and taking advantage of someone who is good and good to you. Because God knows that person hard. Advil cannot heal the heart. Tylenol cannot heal the heart. Ibuprofen, goody powers, cannot heal the heart. But the word of God is the only thing that can heal that person's heart. And God has had enough of y'all taking advantage and using that person. They can't know and see your heart like Jesus can. And Jesus knows that your heart is not right. He knows that your heart is not pure. I know some of you might not like this, but it is what it is. I'm like, I can tell you, everybody's not of God because God knows your heart. He knows he know whose heart is real, and he knows whose heart is pure. Amen? Amen. Let's get into this word. I turn it back to Exodus chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. Exodus chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, said, Let my people go, so that so they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring terrible plague on your livestock in the field on your horses and donkeys and camels, and on your cattle and sheep and nets. But the Lord will make a decision between livestock, Israel, and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. The Lord set a time and said, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. And the next day the Lord did it all. The livestock of the Egyptians died, but no one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Pharaoh sent man to investigate and found that, that found out that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died. Yet his heart was what unyielding, and he would not let the people go. That means God has hardened Pharaoh's heart. He hardened it because his heart was not right. Right now, God has hardened someone's heart right now because their heart is not true. Their heart is not pure. Their heart is not of love. God has hardened someone's heart because God has took notice that the person that you like, the person that you're with, the person that you love or in love with, they are using you. They are using you to the point it's benefiting them. And God has had enough of it. He said, no longer. I'm going to allow that person to reap the benefits of my child when I know that they are only using him and her. They mean them no good. They're not in love with them. They don't even love them. They only consider them a real good friend. God is about to put a stop to it right now. He got to set time on how and when He's going to bring 
disdition and destruction towards that person. Do like he did Pharaoh. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. Nobody can harden nobody's heart but God. God did that. Because God took the evil intention that's inside of him and her. That's why I say everybody's not of God because a lot of people have a lot of malice in their heart. They got a lot of envy. They have a lot of jealousy in their heart. That's something that you cannot detect, my brothers and sisters, from the human eye. But God can see it. And God notices it. That their heart is not right. It's not right. At all. You can't see what's going on. But God can. But God said they're going to have to pay. For what they're doing to you. They got to pay the price. How they taking advantage of you. They got to pay the price. How they using you. They got to pay the price. Because they're not even keeping it real with you at all. They putting on the show, pretending that they care so much about you and how they love you. Just like Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't care about the Israelites. He was just using them for his own good, for his own benefits. There's a lot of Pharaohs out there that's taking advantage of some Israelites right now. And God has spoken and told those Pharaohs right now he said, let my people go. God told Moses that one time. That was it. God ain't got to repeat his stuff because he's not going to repeat his stuff. He's not a tape quarter. He said it one time. Pharaoh want to be hard. There's some Pharaohs out there right now that they want to be hard. There's some Pharaohs out there right now that they don't even realize what's about to happen to them. And what they're about to encounter right now. There's some pharaohs out there right now that they don't realize that God has hardened their heart and a, and, a, and, a, and a plague is about to come into their life. They don't see it, but it's on the way. Because God knows they're hard and right. They're hard and right. Amen? Let's go to Exodus 10. And we're going to read verse 7. Exodus chapter 10. And we're going to read verse 7. Pharaoh's official said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go so they may worship the Lord their God. Do you not realize that Egypt is ruined? Right now, God has already showed Pharaoh what time it was. And he let him know he's not playing. And right now, God is telling some Pharaohs right now, I told you I was not going to play. I told you to let my people go. But you're still doing what you're doing. Now watch how God do what he's going to do. God said they got to pay the price for what they're doing to you. That's what the word of God says. Vengeance is his. It's none of your job. All you got to do is sit still and let the Lord fight for you. Right now the Lord is fighting for the Israelites. Right now God is fighting for you on your behalf right now today, my brothers and sisters. Because there's some pharaohs out there who hard are not right. Who is taking advantage of you. And they're using you. And smiling in your face the whole time, pretending like they care about you, pretending, pretending that they love you, pretending that they're in love with you, and pretending they're your friend. Are you following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Let's go to Exodus 11. And we're going to read verse 4. Exodus 11. And we're going to read verse 4. So Moses said, this is what the Lord said about men like. I will go through throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt would die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the firstborn son of the slave girl who is at her hand mill, and all of the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be a loud wailing throughout Egypt. Worse than there had ever been or ever will be again. But among the Israelites, not a, not a dog will bark at any man or animal. Mm -mm -mm. 
The Lord ain't playing. The Lord is not playing. The Lord said they're going to have to pay for it. So when Pharaoh realized, he had to let him go. And he did let him go. And he realized what he was missing. He went after them. Try to look for them. And God is telling me right now today, your Pharaohs realize that you were the best thing that ever happened to them. Your Pharaohs really miss you right now because they can't do it and they can't make it without you. But God is going to allow your Pharaohs to see y'all from a distance. But they'll never catch you. So a person don't miss their water on him with this thing, Jesus. A person does not miss their water until the well run dry. And once Pharaoh realized that his well had ran dry, he realized that he needed the Israelites. Not because he won't, because he won't continue to use them. Right now, there's some Pharaohs right now today. They know that their water had ran dry, and they're in a search, they're in a hunt to look for you. Because there's nobody out there that was more loyal and dependable and reliable like you. And God has allowed that Pharaoh to see up from a distance, but that Pharaoh cannot catch you. So when the Pharaoh realized they see y'all in this um in this facility, they see y'all at this close distance, they take charge to try to find you. God allowed them to get uh, not close. But not too close, but let them see up from a distance. And bam, God parted the Red Sea and the whole Red Sea collapsed. That was their punishment for doing what they did to God. Do you see how God told Pharaoh he had to pay? Pharaoh had to pay. Pharaoh and all 600 his, his horsemen and chariots was up under the Red Sea. Right now, them Pharaohs that was taking advantage of you, they was using you, manipulating you, dogging you out, pretending like they cared about you, pretending like they love you, pretending they was in love with you. God said they got to pay for what they've done to you. They got to pay. They got to pay for what they've done to you at the point I'm making. God said you didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve it, my sisters. You didn't deserve it, my brothers. But don't worry about it. The battle is in God's hand. And the fight is about the end. Because God is going to show them pharaohs you messed with the wrong child. He told them to let you go. He told them don't mess with them. They belong to me. But they still continue to mislead you. To manipulate you play you and use you for their own good and for their own benefit. That's what they did to you. But don't worry about it, my sisters. Don't worry about my brothers. Payback is something else. If God had to pay Pharaoh back for what he did, what makes you think that God's going to pay that person back for what they're doing to you? Because everybody's not of God because their heart is not right. You can't be of God, you got a wicked heart. You can't be of God, you got a malice heart. You can't be of God, you got an envy heart. You can't be of God if you got a jealousy, a jealousy spirit. You can't. There's no way. Their heart was not right. Their heart wasn't right. Watch how God show up and show out on Pharaohs for what they did to you. I don't know who God is speaking to right now today. I don't know who this word is for right now today. But you know God is talking to you and this word is for you. And you, know, and you feel like that someone's been using you and manipulating you and taking advantage of you. My brother and sister, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of that for you. He's going to pay them back for all the wrong and the dirt they did to you. It's already written in the book. Whatever it is that's written in the book, it got to manifest, my brother and sisters. Let God do what he do best. Let him take care of the situation and the battle for you. God got you. He don't need your help. He already set a time on when it's going to take place. You might not know the time. You might not understand the time and the day. But God has a set time and he has a set date on when he's going to handle business for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
And if you like what you heard today, go and hit the Jesus like button. Go and hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us right now today. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him, always honor him, always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see anything, you don't understand what's happening. Continue to continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please don't let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory, hallelujah. Amen.